Deadly tarantula girl, coming to you from my private serpentarium. Pardon my still weekend voice, I know it's not beautiful. You guys might have heard that seven species that were previously in the Brachypelma genus were reclassified into a, what I believe is a new genus, and a few other Brachypelma were moved around a little bit. So I wanna thank Jay Spider and his beautiful spirit hood for being with us here tonight. He's sporting my red fox hood if you didn't notice. Of the seven species, I have three or four to show you. There are people saying that it's been sorted into red-legged and red-rumped, but that's not exactly true, although a reasonable generality. Colossi is one that does not fall within that rule, but a reasonable generality to kind of still try and help you remember what's what. So I actually conferred with uh, one of my biggest mentors in the tarantula hobby of all times, and he gave me kind of a blow by blow on exactly what's going on within the genus. And so what he specified to me was the following, and I want to cite it verbatim. Yes, I want to cite it verbatim to make sure I'm giving you the accurate information. Accurate information. <coughs> the previously known brachypalmas that were transferred to to Lil to Coddle are T. Albopelosum, Epicuranium, Calumbergi, Sabulosum, Schroederi, Vegans, and Verdesi. Oh, and then uh, we also talked about the Asalmopius Victori, which people are calling the Darth Maul Tarantula or the Mexican Half and Half. And that is not the only arboreal species in Mexico, but that is being investigated by uh, Dr. Jorge Mendoza. And so I don't know if there's actually been any published works, you know, stating contrary to that. So if you research it, that's what you're going to see. And if memory serves, it also seems that Andrew Smith, who was doing research in the area, also was observing an arboreal species in the area that was not the Victori. So he was one of the founding members of the BTS. So if you're not a member of the BTS, I highly encourage you to join. It is an amazing, well-organized organization. I dream of going to the BTS show, uh, maybe one day. Um, oh, I am supposed to be at the next two um, NARBC's the spring show in Arlington in February and the October um, Tinley show in 2020. So, yay for that. Let's take a look at some teas. Yes. So tonight <laughs> we have a few of the Bracky Palmas that were transferred over <laughs> to Tilil to Coddle. Um, the first one we're going to show and start off with is <clears throat> formerly known as Bracky Palma Sabulosum, which is now Tilil Tocado Sabulosum. Very beautiful. This is a young sp specimen. Yes, this is actually a 2018 and it's almost 2020. So this is about a year and a half year old. Yeah, nice little one. It's got some good size on it already. This is one that originally came from Jay Spider. Yay. Yeah. One of many. The next thing that we have is something that <coughs> The DTG <laughs> and I found at a reptile show. Yep. This is formerly known as Brachypelma epicranium, is now Talil Tocado epicranium, or the Yucatan rust rump. <clears throat> Give you guys a better view there. And our good friends at SNS Exotics, mm -hmm. the one who got us hooked up with this one. Yes. At a time we were collecting every Brachypelma that we could find, get our hands on, and this was one that. I didn't know too much about and so we we got this specimen and have grown it up and it's turned out to be very pretty tarantula. Yeah, it does resemble the vegans to a point but it is unique and beautiful. It'll be nice to do a side-by-side -side comparison mm -hmm. between a vegans and the epicranium when they're all mature. Definitely. It'll be interesting that they'll both be a new genus. Mm -hmm. Our next specimen we have 
This is the good old, formerly known, Brachypelma albopelosum. Yes. Which is now the Talil Tocotl <laughs> albopelosum. <coughs> and this is your curly hairs. Mm hmm Very pretty. Almost looks like a poodle. If mm -hmm. a tarantula could be a poodle. Yep. Got the very curly, nice hairs. And this is a young specimen as well. And... We've been growing this one up for quite a while mm -hmm. to join our the rest of the albopelosum that we have. That one's probably three or four years old now. Yeah. They're still a relatively slower growing species, but they sure are fun and usually have very good docile temperaments. Mm -hmm. And the last of the brachies that we have in the collection, renamed into the Tilotocotl genus. genus is your formerly known Brachypelma vegans or the Mexican red, red rump. rump. Yeah. And this one already has some beautiful color on it. This is one of the first Brachypelmas that really caught my eye. A lot of people usually go for the Brachypelma smith eyes, um, but for me, when I was a new hobbyist, the vegans caught my eye. The dramatic red abdomen that these species has against the nice jet black body it's just it's gorgeous so the brachypelma that have remained in the genus are albiceps erratum bumgartni boomi emilia hamori clossi and smithi because there are still smithi like to point out so yeah that's really cool they've been split into two <coughs> different genus and so that's a little update. If you have one of the previously known Brachypelma, you might want to update your labels and practice saying... Talil Tocotl. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys liked this little update. I want to thank my mentor for emailing me about this. I love that I can count on him. He doesn't like being in the public eye, but he doesn't mind conversing with me in private. And so... You are the man. You know who you are. Comment below what you think about this wacky change and uh, whether you own any of these species. So I hope you guys like this one. We'll see you next time. Be trusting me, I could be making it all up, you know